have been blessed by Carson today. What a blessing it was for Brother Warren and I to stand back there and see you. You've been through a lot over the past, how, how long has it been? A year and a half, maybe, or something, or a year? A year ago. Eight weeks on his back, and he has been through it. I mean, we remember in a wheelchair. But the whole time I was on my way to hell. So no, yes. Yeah. 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 But to see God keeping you, yeah. man, you were your old self today. Wow. I mean, this was, I mean, I just felt like I was in one of your revivals from years ago. And this is wonderful, I tell you. You've got the devil on the run, man. He's scared. He's scared. Amen. That's wonderful. Did you enjoy Mickey and Dennis today? We appreciate them coming. And we've got great news, folks. I tell you what. Uh, I woke up early this morning, about 4 o'clock this morning, and I was laying there, and I was just, this has been on my mind for weeks, this uh, benefit for Brother Warren. And I just, uh, I was saying, Lord, just do something supernatural today. You know, this isn't a big place here. You know, this, this building, this isn't very big. We don't have 1,200 people here today. But I, I tell you what y'all did, and we just appreciate this so much. We don't even know how to thank you. Brother Warren's going to come up in a moment. He's going to try to thank you for this. But, uh, and there will be more coming in because there were pledges over the phone today, and we mentioned it on the air, so we'll be getting the mail Monday and, and uh Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, and I'm sure. But uh, right now, as of right now, uh, the offering was eight thousand three hundred and ninety-one. Is that amazing? I told him. I, sometimes you don't want to limit God. I was laying there thinking, Lord, your perfect number is seven. Give us at least seven thousand. And God wants to do more. This is the coldest day we've had that we'll have in a two-week period. We were praying that it would be in the upper 70s today. There would have been more people here if there had been. But you know what? Just like with Gideon, God does it the way He wants to do it. Sometimes He'd rather take less people so it shows what He can do. And this is, I tell you, this will top $9,000. And we have a friend that's a wonderful Christian that has a dealer license. And we can go to Nashville to the auction and we can buy, with what we'll have here, we can buy an $11,000 car for Brother Warren. A retail value. So he's going to get a good car. Appreciate Randy Ritchie and the men. Were you blessed by them today? Amen. Brother Warren, come on up here. Brother Warren just wants to share with you. Thank you, Brother Donnie. Praise God. Uh, folks, it's hard for me to stand here on this occasion. Uh, I'm more used to standing here to preach and uh, give out to you all. And sometimes what I give out, people say, oh, it's a little too hard. <laughs> but uh, it's hard for me because uh, I, I uh, have never been the one that wanted to stand, be in the limelight. I don't like the spotlight on me. I'd rather be in the background. When you're up here preaching, you, you have no alternative, Brother Carson, but to be up here because God's called you to do it. You have to fulfill the call. And people think some preachers, all preachers want to be in the spotlight. That's not the case. Uh, I read a story about Billy Graham. And he, this was his own testimony. He said, in all the years that I've been preaching, I've never got used to standing up in front of people. And he said, every time I do, I get nervous. And he said, what I do is I get off to myself about a half hour before I go out, and I just lay down before the Lord somewhere, and I just get my mind on Jesus, and I just think about Him, and He calms me down. That's what he said. Now, you would think a person like that in front of all those people, millions and millions of people, would be used to it. He said, I never got used to it. I don't get used to it either. I'm nervous every time I get behind the pulpit. But this is really hard today because uh, the Apostle Paul said something that I can't identify with. And people, they really won't listen to you when you say it, but I don't guess I guess they don't listen to the Apostle Paul either. <laughs> but uh, he said, 
You know, the Apostle Paul was probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest apostle of all ever. Yet he said, I am less. I'm not the least of saints. He didn't say that. He said, I am less than the least. See, Paul drew a line and he said, there's the least right there. Here's the whole list of saints and here's the last one. Now you want to find me? Come on down. I'm less than the least. I know what he means because that's exactly the way I feel about myself. There's no one in this world more undeserving of what's happened today than I am. I don't deserve this. There's a lot of you here and people work. This place deserves a lot. This is a lot more than I do. But God, he, he, he sometimes, uh, I, I don't understand God's blessings because I, I don't deserve what He gives me. I don't deserve His blessings. Uh, I, I didn't, the day He came to me on May 2nd, 1969 on a plane that was supposed to crash land and we thought we was all going to maybe die on this plane. I didn't deserve that day for Him to come to me and say that day on that plane I want you and save me on that plane. Nobody was more unworthy. I don't, the song that Nikki sings, there's something about, I don't know if it's the Ten Commandments or what, but she, uh, she says something about the heathens in it. Well, I, that's what I was. I was a heathen. I, was, I had a black heart. Black heart. Didn't care about nobody, Carson, but my wife and child and anybody else could have just flown the coop. I didn't care. I had a black heart. But God used to use God's name in vain. What's your first name? Randy. He used to use God's name in vain like it was water before I got saved. Then after He saved me, He took that away. Aren't you glad? And He put praise in the place. And for years and years, I, I just all of a sudden, every time I talk to somebody, say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And somebody said to me one day, said, why do you praise God so much? Can't talk to you without you praising the Lord. I said, well, I guess it's because God's getting me back for all the times I damned His name. And I guess now, over the years, I've probably praised Him more than I've ever did the other. Uh, so I don't feel deserving of this today but there is one who Carson in my heart only one that deserves glory and I'm glad that I'm on the upper end of my vapor see we're all, we're all, our lives are like a vapor I'm looking at some of you today. You're on the upper end of that vapor. Your, your vapor is about to <laughs> disappear. When it does, you know what it means? You're gone. I'm glad that I'm on the upper end of my vapor. The Lord, I'm not telling you, this is not words. I'm not seeing her lie to you. It's come to me many times if you go back and do it over, would you? And I said, Lord, only if I could go back to a certain point and could do something to change everything I've done wrong. But if I couldn't, I wouldn't go back for every penny this world's got. Because I'm too close to home. And Carson, this is not my home here. In the last few years, God has just made this a foreign place to me. You see, this world is full of lost people that don't love God. But gathered in this place today has been a group of people that to God, this is God's family. You're born again. You're, you're sitting beside of somebody that's your brother or your sister. You're a part of God's royal family. This is God. Now, we're going to all leave here together and, and, going to, and filter out among all these people. But when we're together like this, it's a little bit of resemblance of what heaven's going to be like. 
And I'm glad when Nikki sung that song and, and we were praising the Lord, worshiping Him. That's what it's going to be like in heaven. Just about a thousand times greater. Yeah. Yeah. Everything in heaven praises the Lord, Randy. Everything. I read the scripture said, let the moon and the stars praise Him. Glory to God. Let the sun praise Him. I'm looking forward to that day, Brother Carson. When we're all there. When, when I'm, my, my, my trip is over. Somebody asked me on the internet the other night, said, what do you want to do? What hope happens in the next two years of your life? And I said, thought to myself, Lord, she was telling me about all that she wanted to do and, and it just come to me the next two years of my life and the rest of my life, Brother Carson, I just want to be found in the will of God. That's all I want. When he comes to call me home, I just want to give him able, I want him to find me in his will. Right where I'm supposed to be. Because that's where he's going to come looking. Where you're supposed to be. I want to be there. I can't thank you all enough for what you've done today. Um, I thank you for the wonderful things people have said and all that. But it, please don't take this wrong. I, some of you get mad at me. I've had people get mad at me before. Uh, I appreciate. Nobody has said that another man's lips praise you, not your own. And I don't think we should uh, Carson pat ourselves on the back and say, <laughs> Carson, if I told you, I'll tell you after service, you talk about listening to your own, uh, your own song, I, I'll tell you that. Sometimes I want to hear the truth of God's Word preached so bad I can't find it just pop in one of my own tapes. I don't mean it wrong. It's not me that I want to hear. It's the Word I want to hear. It's the Word. And you can't find it, Brother Jimmy. You can't find it anymore. Listen to minister after minister. You're not hearing the Word. Admitted, uh, most of those here, you're hearing what people want to hear. What tickles their ears. Makes them feel good so that that offering plate doesn't go down. Yeah. But there's coming a day, Randy, when you 